Nowadays, you can see them just about everywhere in parks, buses, the subway, the gym, even in their cars. We call them iPod zombies. They listen to their iPods, tuning out the outside world and everyone around them. Their close cousins are the Blackberry addicts who are forever typing and texting and browsing. All these devices are real examples of how technology is changing our world and the way we interact or don't interact with other people. Our resident culturologist, Dr. Shirley Steinberg, is back in studio with her take on invasion of the iPod zombies. And so what's your take on this? Well, I was just looking for your BlackBerry. I'm interested bring, to see you didn't oh, bring it today. You're, mean. <laughs> you're not supposed to tell people. I actually am a little bit of a BlackBerry addict. Uh, I, do, I don't bring it into studio. I wouldn't be able to focus. And you know they call them crackberries. They do of call them crackberries. Yeah. And, and you're not a big fan of this, are you? you Actually, I just ordered one though, because I had one and got rid of it. Now I'm getting one again. For research purposes? Yes, always for research purposes. Um, I think that our obsession is is controlled by the machine, and once you remove the machine, our obsession gets less. I've just spent three weeks without any iPoding or cell phoning and found myself incredibly annoyed at everyone else who had them. You know, it does cut down on human interaction. Absolutely. And is that a bad thing? I think so. I think it's an excuse not to interact, but only at your beck and call. So that if I pursue you with a Blackberry email message or a text message or a phone call, I get you when I want to. And so there's this incredible breach of your own privacy, maybe not when you want to be breached. The other idea is that you can be found anywhere which is a little scary now people on planes trains automobiles buses are working all the time so when do we have leisure when do we relax because if you look at these these images we have of people with their iPods I mean it really does create your own little world you're basically cut off it's like a community of one it is and if you lose your iPod or if someone um, purges it of course then that life of one becomes over because how can you possibly survive without your your burned work that you wanted and, and some people do use them I guess exactly for that purpose so they don't have to interact with other it's people. It's a great excuse you go to the gym you don't have to talk to people um, you you go to a restaurant you don't have to talk to people people will avoid people with eye contact when they're on an iPod. It's almost like a caller ID do you remember we, back in the old days the yes. phone would ring and you'd answer it no matter what and now it's uh, you're screening Screen and all everything. you're not answering the ringers right. off but then there's a, and also too Todd I think what about our physical danger I mean how many taxi drivers are not on a cell phone when they're driving um, or checking their Blackberry checking their email checking their GPS which is supposed to be I think illegal now in Quebec anyway but there was a story out in BC how this pedestrian was listening to his iPod right. didn't hear the helicopter uh, and a helicopter in this freak accident crashed and killed him and and bikers in Montreal all the time I see bicyclists with their iPods on it's very, very interesting. It's like, you know, I can understand you wanting to center yourself and remove yourself, but maybe not with the traffic. So what are the long-term effects about less and less contact with people? Because, you know, t t another example is bank tellers. Well, a lot of us use the ATMs now. Right. We don't have any contact with bank tellers. Uh, it's just another example of this kind of thing. What's the long-term effect? I think it is a, an alienation of human beings. I mean, we've talked before about all the ramifications in our society about the alienation of human beings. This is a literal alienation. Now, ca cab drivers don't even have to speak to passengers. You go to buy something in the store, people are on their cell phones. iPods keep people from, keep people from even saying, excuse me, pardon me. Um, there's got to be a problem, a malaise that sets in with a society that doesn't talk to each other. And before we go, I just want to show this little example of something that you brought back from Japan. Yes, from a restaurant. And, and this is this basically says no cell phones, please, right? right? Because how can you eat your food with everyone yelling on a cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Shirley Steinberg, thanks very much for You're this. You're welcome. We'll be